Hey guys, haven't done a video for a while. I uh, hope everyone is doing well and uh, have been watching everyone's uh, progress with interest. Uh, I have been in the background uh, making a bit of gold as you guys can see there. It's not going too bad for the year. Uh, I'm probably a little bit over two ounces or so at the moment, so you know, slow progress, but no, no, nothing basically chasing me around. But I have noticed recently that. Um, you seem to be able to pick up uh, gold plated cutlery for pretty much for free uh, essentially just paying f the, sh the shipping usually costs more than the actual cutlery and I thought maybe uh, it would be worth having a go and seeing um, what you can actually recover from this, this kind of stuff um, most of it is uh, se seems to be very similar so it's either going to be very good or very bad but um, I'm not sure if it's going to be readable on the video there, but that says uh, 23k gold plated Japan and most of this stuff is pretty similar and most most of it seems to have that, that kind of message on it so um, yeah, definitely uh, definitely worth having a go and just seeing uh, what we can get out of it so I did a quick count and weigh before and as you can see there we got 43 pieces and 875 grams so all up didn't cost me very much as I said before the shipping was probably more than the actual uh, the actual cost of the of the goods and you can see here that I've got this sitting in my uh, deplating cell that's just where I've been dumping this stuff until I get around to it uh, because essentially you're going to have a very thin coating of gold over a ton of base metal and I've, I've had a go and most of this stuff is magnetic so I'm assuming that it's going to be some kind of stainless steel under the gold and so um, you know, terrible to, to try and approach this from a chemical point of view. It, it'll be uh, just, you know, liters of acid to get a very tiny amount of gold. So what we're going to do is a standard uh, sulfuric acid deplating cell. This is the old one that I used to use with the basket for deplating pins and that kind of things. But I figured for, uh, for this kind of stuff, probably just a uh, borosilicate beaker. I've got one of my uh, little lead anodes that I folded over, so it'll just sit in there. And um, yeah, essentially the plan is going to be attach the positive side of a uh, of a power source to my work to the uh, to the item to be deplated, negative obviously to the, uh, the piece of lead, dip it into the sulfuric acid, turn on the uh, power supply, while keeping an eye on the current flowing, and essentially just um, what you'll probably see, and I'll, I'll show you this when it's happening, but the. Uh, just a standard thing you'll you'll basically see the uh, kind of like a black cloud forming a, a, around the stuff that you're depleting that's the gold that uh, gets dissolved into solution but then Im immediately precipitates out as the black powder uh, sulfuric acid is um, let's see I've got it here it's uh, double bag so safe for gloveless operation at this point I'm working with 98% uh, pure sulfuric acid um, I've got a, a brand new container, so there's no contamination from previous batches. So uh, any gold that we recover, we'll be we'll be able to figure out uh, using this. So yeah, um, for the power supply, I'll start off with just a 12 volt battery charger. I think this will deliver about three amps or so. Uh, I think the last time I did this, I used my bench supply, and I was running it at about eight amps, but. Um, shouldn't be necessary. We'll, we'll see how the free amp goes and then uh, might change up from there if required. So I'll get this all set up. Uh, obviously just a, a quick word of warning. Um, sulfuric acid is pretty much the reason why everyone's always telling you to add acid to water and not the other way around. Um, even a small amount of water like you accidentally grab a spray bottle and you want to spray something down that will have bad results. So when I tend to work with sulfuric acid I don't have anything uh, water within reach there's no no spray bottles or anything like that just you know you don't want to an absent-minded mistake and also um, sulfuric acid reacts really badly with uh, eyes and skin and stuff like that worse than um, the nitric and and uh, hydrochloric which we usually use so just you know take care of yourself uh, okay guys I think I've got this uh, set up well enough that we can uh, give it a try so you'll see I've got a uh, nice clean sulfuric acid in the beaker there I've got the negative terminal of my charger hooked up to the lead. Uh, we've got the multimeter in series here on the 10, 10 ampere range so we should be able to see the, uh, the current flow as it's deflating and um, 
yeah basically let's give it a try without too much hassle so I've got the uh, positive side coming from the multimeter um, hooked up to my item to be depleted and uh, yeah essentially let's see what happens so I put that in there hope you guys can see we've got uh, the gold basically deplating off of there and you can see the current reducing on the uh, on the multimeter there if we go the other way let's see what we get it's not very much current happening there looks like uh, looks like the gold may be already depleted if you uh, if I pull that out a bit you guys uh, can probably see up there the difference between the um, the kind of the silver from the stainless steel and the gold plating and it should be pretty clear uh, for those of you that have done this before that when you're seeing so little black cloud at this point forming that uh, we are dealing with almost no gold at all which is a little bit uh, a little bit disappointing but I guess that's uh, that's the way gold works yeah so I'd say that's 100% uh, depleted I'm going to uh, pull it out give it a little bit of a shake just get rid of the worst of the uh, sulfuric acid and I'll just show you guys there so pretty clear the difference between where we have depleted and where we haven't uh, I'm using a copper, a solid copper crocodile clip here, so that should be fine with the sulfuric. So I'm just going to attach to the other side. Try not to, uh, try not to touch it. We'll just uh, deplate that side as well. You'll see the the current will jump up again. Don't worry about the uh, polarity of the current being wrong. It just means that I've got the uh, the wrong side hooked up to the fork uh, and to the power supply. Uh, so it's no no big deal. Current is current. So um, yeah, that's uh, that's as quick as it is to to deplate a fork. So after that, it's going to go into the uh, into the wash container on the right there. So there's a little bit of color forming in there. Um, I'll carry on. I'll do another 10 or 15 or so, and then I'll just get back to you guys, and uh, we'll see how we're progressing. Um, there's not too much of fumes or anything like that coming off of the uh, sulfuric acid. I will. We are working in the fume hood and I will turn on the fume hood in a minute um, so just just don't want to do create too much noise but um, it's a, a relatively uh, the acid is dangerous but the procedure is relatively safe especially when it's done slow like I'm doing it now. If I were doing uh, bulk material I would monitor the temperature of the beaker but as slow as I'm going with this, it's not going to warm up significantly, especially running at only about 3 amps. So I'm going to carry on doing this. Uh, we should see that get darker. The only thing to watch with sulfuric acid is it is hygroscopic, so it likes to absorb uh, moisture. And so even just uh, if you left it sitting here, especially in a humid place like New Zealand, you would see the level of the sulfuric acid rise as it's absorbing moisture and you really want to keep that as close to 98% as you can for this to work well. So I'll carry on for a little bit longer and then uh, I'll be back with you guys. Hey guys, it's been about 10 minutes or so and I'm most of the way through my supply of uh, cutlery. You can see we've got a nice uh, dark, well, I'm going to say solution, but really it's more of a suspension. And this is where it becomes obvious why it's nice to have the meter because uh, you can't really see what's happening inside there but I don't really have to as long as I can see the uh, as long as I can see the current on the meter I know while it's that high something is happening and you'll notice a very sharp drop so it's starting to drop now and it's going to drop to a few hundred milliamps um, and then I know it's finished see how quick it drops there all gone and um, once the numbers stabilize like that, you pretty much know that you've got all the uh, all the gold removed. And uh, just uh, flip it over and do the other side. 
still drawing a lot of current starting to drop quickly now and you're pretty much all gone oh, a very easy process a uh, little bit tedious to do by hand like this but you know for what I'm doing it's okay into the wash container so yeah I'll just finish this off and then we'll uh, we'll deal with everything else okay guys so I have the vacuum flask here with the vacuum tube connected a funnel and inside the funnel I've got a plug made out of um, a fiberglass cloth that I had lying around so I've just stuffed a whole bunch of that in there and so I'll start putting our solution through and I'm hoping that the plug is going to be good enough to trap the particles I'm not super optimistic at this point but we'll find out okay guys so the um, fiberglass sheet didn't work that well so I'm going to try the same thing again but this time using some uh, home sealing insulation fiberglass so it's much finer and I was able to squeeze much more of it in there so uh, yeah let's um, apply some vacuum and uh, let's pour a little bit in and see what it does sure if it's working much better uh, my <laughs> asset appears to be turning pink which is the the color of the fiberglass so either it's dissolving the fiberglass or it's uh, dissolving the colorant of it but either way the um, the asset appears to be coming through very clear it's not got the same uh, the same black particles it's kind of hard to see the stream for you guys but if you look at the stream there it, uh, it's coming out quite clear so I suspect this will actually work although I'd say if you guys are going to do this um, use the the white fiberglass stuff not the pink stuff that I've used because I've discolored my acid for some reason but we'll see how this goes now okay guys so we're in the a little bit more of the standard kind of uh, refining here so the the second lot of fiberglass that I used from the roof insulation worked really well to filter out uh, uh, all of the particles from the sulfuric acid um, the acid itself which has been put back into this bottle uh, you can see is still a, a little bit discolored but I could see that it was quite clear as it went uh, as it went through the filter so what's left in there will just have to stay in there and we'll have to uh, basically deal with what we can here so I vacuum filtered as much of the acid out of the um, out of the two bits of filter material as I could and then I put that into some hydrochloric acid which is what's happening here and um, as you can see quite a lot of uh, you know like, like that that top filter material is quite uh, full of the black gunk so that's probably a good sign uh, still have no idea how much we're actually going to get out of this but we'll find out so I'm just going to uh, heat up this hydrochloric acid till about 70 degrees Celsius and then I'll probably start by adding about half a milliliter of nitric, nitric acid uh, to dissolve the gold and we'll just see, uh, see what's left after that so I'll get back to you guys when, uh, when we get to that stage okay guys um, got this solution up to temperature let's give it uh, uh, half a milliliter or so of nitric acid see if there's any uh, any reaction happening there yep you guys should be able to see that uh, kind of clear up pretty well there the acids definitely taking on a little bit of color give it a little bit of a stir and I'll just let that sit for a uh, let that sit for a few moments and see if the um, the black that you guys can see there dissolves away um, cool be back shortly
Hey guys, so next day for me and I have the results here of the um, gold plate cutlery. So this, this gold here has been uh, twice refined. So yeah, looking pretty good. The, uh, the first drop was pretty dirty as you might expect with all the other stuff that was in there and uh, decided to do it again. So um, obviously because it's, it's quite a small amount there, there will be substantial losses all along the way. You guys saw that I, I definitely didn't recover 100% from the sulfuric acid. Uh, obviously in time I'll get all that back. But uh, I thought for right now let's weigh this up and just get a rough idea of, uh, of what, we, what we're dealing with. So just uh, from memory that was uh, 43 pieces and 875 grams was the total weight of what went in. So let's uh, yeah, not muck around too much. We'll do a live weigh in and see how we go. So just going to zero off what's in there. And then remember when you're working with small amounts like this, you've got um, the zero tracking on the scale to deal with. So try and apply some weight to your container as your, so your scale is not trying to track zero as you're putting in a small amount of weight at a time. So that's why you'll see I always tend to bump the, uh, always tend to bump the container. I, I hope we've got enough there that we should be able to weigh it. It's not much. Oh yeah, okay. Oh. So, obviously not, not an ideal amount to be trying to weigh up, but uh, a little bit more dust in there, but I think I've got most of it out. So let's say that that is going to be 0 0.14 grams. So <laughs> a surprisingly tiny amount of gold uh, from that cutlery, I guess that's to be expected. I'm always disappointed with plated stuff. So we said 0 0.14 grams. And if we do have a bit of quick math, I'm just gonna cover that before I knock it over and give you guys a good laugh. Uh, so do a quick math in the eagle eye observer might notice I got a nice new calculator. It is a little bit better than the old crappy one. So um, in New Zealand dollars, zero 0.14 grams times about $60 a gram. So we're looking at about um, $8.40 worth of gold. And obviously I paid quite a lot more than that with, with all of the shipping for all of the stuff. So not a money making exercise right here. And if we wanted to know per piece, we just divide that by 43. And it's going to tell us there's about uh, 20 cents 20 cents New Zealand, so I think that's about 11 or so cents US at the moment um, per item in gold value. And if we wanted to work out the the ratio or the, the yield, we're just going to say uh, 0 0.14 grams divided by 875 grams gives us a very small number multiplied by 100 for percentage. Um, yeah, not that bad. Oh, well, pretty bad, but that's telling us that uh, that, that cutlery is 0.016% um, gold. So yeah, I think uh, probably not going to bother with anything like that again. It's, um, it's obviously a, a, a tiny, tiny amount of gold. And I remember thinking the first time many years ago when I watched a, uh, a YouTube video, I think it was Three Tips um, and on um, kind of recovery of gold from plated items, how small the actual amount of pure gold ends up being, uh, much more, much smaller than you actually think it will, it's going to be. And I guess this just uh, confirms that again. Anyway, a uh, bit of fun for the weekend. Hope you guys have a good week and catch you next time.